question is, what should you sell online? What's the best product? What's the most profitable product? Where can you get it for the low low? And all of that jazz, right? That's the question that so many people ask. That's the information that so many people want to know. And it's misguided. The best way for me to illustrate to you what is the best product for you to sell online is to talk about me and then to mix it up and talk about what I believe you should do. I had an ebook, Making Money A to Z with Self Storage and Auctions, right? And I made collectively over a few years $1.5 million. The product was 59, it was 19 bucks at the beginning, it was 59 at one point, $59.99, and I raised it up to $99 on Amazon. I actually had the book at a higher price on Amazon than I did on my website, which actually violates Amazon's terms of service. They never caught me. I don't know why, but they never did. That was a really good product, but I created it. If you're gonna get into buying products to resell online, understand you're playing a very complicated game. And one of the reasons that I do not like a lot of information out there is they keep using the words simple, easy, and fast. Whenever you're investing hundreds or thousands of your dollars into a physical product, understand the game is complex. And this is why so many people fail. I will also illustrate that in eBay, I had a user ID where I was selling bedroom sets. Two, three, four, five, six thousand dollar bedroom sets, which were pretty hard to ship. They're very hard to ship. And I had a profit margin of about anywhere from 500, which really sucked, up to about 2,500, in some cases, three thousand dollars after all expenses and eBay fees. Now, why did I be able to sell bedroom sets, which are bulky, expensive, and hard to ship, when the common knowledge in the common knowledge has always been find a product that is durable, find a product that's easy to ship, find a product that's super cheap, and on and on and on. Which means you have 90 something percent of the people who are trying to sell products online looking for products that fit into those parameters. So what happens with that? You have a gaggle of people looking for the same type of products. And I know that this is a big world. I understand that there is unlimited opportunity, but if you are fishing in the same pond that everyone else is fishing, the pickings are gonna be slim. That's just math, that's just simple math. The best product and the most profitable product that you should sell is one that you have special knowledge about. Didn't expect that, did you? Now, all right, selling furniture, selling bedroom sets. I was set up to move that kind of product. I had a warehouse with a dock. I had furniture accounts. So the barrier to entry was not low, it was complicated because it's not really that hard if you know who to talk to, how to talk to them to set up an account with a wholesaler. It's not hard at all. But most people don't know how to do that. So I leveraged uh, information asymmetry. Information asymmetry is when you know something that most people do not to my benefit. That's how I managed to sell those products. So what you have to do is stop watching all the YouTube videos about what's the best product to sell. Stop watching all the Shopify videos. Stop watching all the Amazon videos. And start here. Start in your backyard looking for products. Because let's say you live in Spokane, Wisconsin, if that is a place, Spokane, Washington. And you have a situation 
where you can get a product from a local manufacturer that most folks will have a high shipping cost. So you can sell it competitively. You can sell it for maybe 20, 30% off because you don't have that shipping cost, which makes you more competitive. Essentially what I'm saying is you gotta do some research. Your money is in your research. It is not in quote the low hanging fruit because the low hanging fruit has everybody's hands all over it. They, I mean, that fruit's been picked over, touched, kissed, all kinds of nasty stuff has happened. You know, humans are nasty. So I will tell you what I would do if I were new to online and I had kind of figured some stuff out because if you are brand spanking new, these gurus will have you thinking that unless that you're finding a product from China, and we'll talk about China and what I went through with that, that you can put on eBay and give away 50, get your reviews up and then sell you're literally spending a few hundred to a few thousand dollars to give away product for free and hope that Amazon doesn't gank your listing. I don't want to play that game. I don't know about you, but I don't want to play the game. So I would be realistic. I would not set a budget. And I know it's like, whoa, we got to set budgets. No, no, actually you don't. So I was like, okay, I miss Spokane. And then I go to and find out there's this little candle shop. They make candles. They've got a few stores locally. Now, this is something you have to look at too. If a store, if a company can be in existence for 10, 20, 30 years selling their product, apparently they know something. Apparently that product sells. So if you go out, and once again, and I did a video about this in the storage section, it doesn't have to be sexy. It doesn't have to be hot. It doesn't have to be a lit product. It can be so basic. So you find this candle maker. They've been in business. You talk to the owner. The owner has got a big ranch driving the Range Rover. They're making money. It's like, okay, would you sell me these candles? But you would have to talk intelligently to the owner because the owner knows about Amazon and the owner knows about eBay. And the reason the owner is not on Amazon and eBay is he doesn't want to have pricing compression, which means his candles become a commodity and the price plummets. So that's why he ain't on there. Cause you know, it's like, yeah, you know, I can come in here and I can sell your candles on Amazon and we can blow this up. Do you know that selling a product at a discount price is one of the fastest ways that businesses go out of business? What happens is the demand increases, which means they in turn now have to go out and get money to get new machinery or hire new employees, but they're selling at a smaller price. So they're trying to play this slippery game of, we're gonna sell really, really fast, and we're gonna live in these little tiny, tiny margins. And it generally doesn't work. It doesn't. Uh, for your Amazon people, how many of you have been selling the same product for 10 years? Please put that in the comment, because I'm quite sure that you've had to change product categories, add products consistently, constantly, making love to Amazon constantly, right? How long do you think you're gonna keep that up? Because uh, one of the big problems with Amazon FBA is you get money now, but you give up future money. A traditional business, you don't make money right now, not the kind of money you could be making, but the future is bright. Amazon completely destroys that and reverses that paradigm, and a lot of people are feeling that. So go to this candle maker and talk to him like a business person. Instead of thinking, well, I need some candles to sell. Yeah. No, it's like, okay. What can I bring to this business owner that he doesn't have that makes him money? When you start to think like that, doors open, people talk to you, because that's what this, that's what it's about. None of this rent seeking, and that's what a lot of this stuff's about is making as much money as you possibly can while not enriching anyone else. And that is a zero sum game. That's a game that Trump plays. It's like for me to win, someone must lose. That's not good business. It's just not the way to do it. So you will sit there and you will kind of hang around the owner, set some appointments and kind of get to know the candle business and make it clear you have no intentions of opening up a candle plant. You just want to know, 
everything you can so you can sell these candles. Talk to them honestly, be open, and then more than likely if you build a working relationship or even a friendship, it's gonna give you some candles to sell. And then you're gonna learn how to position the candles. Because here's the thing, everything sells. Everything, matches sell, toothpaste sells, but people are looking for quote, that sweet product, right? That super uber product without doing the work. I'm gonna tell you a story of how a product category was created. How many of you um, rollerbladed as a kid or has a set of rollerblades right now? Well, the company that made rollerblades, they were looking to expand their market share because the only people who bought rollerblades were hockey teams that wanted to practice in the summer. Now understand, you know, across the United States, that's a lot of people. But the rollerblade people are like, man, we want to make more money. We want to develop a new category. We want to expand the new markets. So this woman, I don't remember her name, she comes in, she says, okay. So she goes out and she finds five really good looking guys, somewhat muscular, and they're rolling. They're like super bad. You know, they're coming in on these rollerblades. And this is what created the rollerblade craze. It was already a product, they already had capacity, they already were selling, and they expanded market share by marketing. They weren't marketing. They were doing no marketing. They, they just had established accounts. So bringing in a marketing person created this multi-billion dollar category that didn't exist. So instead of saying, what's the best product, or what's the best thing to sell, ask yourself, how can I bring a lot of service to the internet? How can I bring more clarity? What can I do? Ask yourself those questions because everyone's trying to jump in the same pool is gonna get similar results. Uh, one of the things that I do is I look at a lot of videos where people are not successful with Amazon FBA. Now, everybody can't be successful with Amazon and FBA. And I know that's gonna sound hard, because I was watching, it sounds very harsh, I know, but I was watching this one video where this couple got into Amazon FBA, but he sold medical supplies. That was his full-time job. His full-time job was a 200K a year job. Let me say that again. His full-time job was a 200K a year job. The wife did not work. The wife stayed home. She did Amazon FBA. So. They were living great before Amazon FBA, and they had significantly more money, capital, to put into Amazon FBA. So let's let's just take that apart. They had a team, it was two people. Uh, many of you, it's just one. It's just you, you got a job, you might be married, but your, your spouse ain't on board, so it's all on you. Work that job, raise those kids, be a husband, be a wife. Whereas this group, they had like great income and you know, typically, I know this may sound a little sexist, but typically when the money's right, you just don't have fights in your marriage. Typically, you just don't. So I'm quite sure they were a good team, working well, he's a husband, he's providing, she's at home, you know, she's putting in these long hours, you know, on Amazon FBA. But I remember she said, we took his bonus which was thousands of dollars to buy product. So let's go ahead and walk through that whole process. One, he had a very good income, so they did not need Amazon money to live on. Very, very important point, and this is another thing that kills single people who are trying to make the money and live off the money. So they had that situation. Then they had money above and beyond his check to invest in the Amazon business. And those two factors, I don't care how well they researched it because if they did not have that capital, they wouldn't have had the results that they had. They probably would have still been somewhat successful in Amazon FBA, but you cannot dispute the money. And that's where a lot of people watch these videos, they get all hyped up and they don't read between the lines because you could sell so many products, you could sell so many things, but part of the situation is knowing how a business runs. 
and because they had the capital to weather the mistakes, to weather bad buys, and not lose the house, and not start fighting over money. And I mean, you know, this is why I look at stuff very deeply. I don't just look at the surface level. So, uh, you want to find products, quit watching the videos, and start reading books. Because another issue, and I've seen this, is that people will want their success to be very quick. They don't have time to watch a long video. And I'm gonna tell you something, you're probably gonna be insulted. If you can't watch a long video, if you can't read a book, that's usually a sign of your intelligence. I, I, I know people like, oh, I don't have time to read books. I don't have time to watch a video. I need, because I get these comments like, man, get to the point. I ain't got time. It was like, no, you have a very short attention span, my dude. Might do that. And more than likely, you kind of stupid. Because longer attention spans are a part of higher intelligence. Google wasn't built in a week by someone working two hours a day. FedEx wasn't built in a week by someone working two hours a day. A lot of these companies were built by very smart, very bright people that put in the time and work. And that's what you gotta do. So don't ask, what's the cheapest product? What's the best product? What's the fastest selling product? Because those industries, and people do it. People come up and say, look, I sold this on Amazon. And they'll come off so genuine like, you know, I, I can't get all of them in the country. I'm just trying to help you, right? I have seen stuff that I used to sell on eBay for two, 300 bucks. Now I go for $30 because of this. Stuff that I bought for a dollar to 200 bucks. So uh, all of these videos and all this information sharing, I want you to look at how does this person make their money. The things that I tell you in these videos are things that I am doing, have done, or have experienced. And this is why I'm continuing. Like I've been on YouTube making money for nine years. I've not had a job since 2000. I haven't had a job in 18 years. So look at that before you go look for the quick results because more than likely when you're looking for a product to sell, the best product is usually going to be something that you have thought about, that you have researched, and that you have positioned. Uh, we had someone in the chat the other day who did that and she sold it on Amazon FBA and Amazon ganked her. And there's a lot of stories of this happening, but people don't get it. And one other thing too, and if you're a person who's 30, 40, 50, and you see all of these younger people, or in some cases kids, making this money, right? They got a product, they got a Shopify store, they got an Amazon store, you know, they're making three, four grand, and you're a grown man, a grown woman, you ain't even making three, four grand, and they making three, four grand a month, and they living at home with the rents, the parents, right? Well, don't beat yourself up over that stuff, because they don't have any responsibilities like you do. This is why I always tell my kids, you know, my 16 year age, start a business now, do it now, do it now, do it now, while you have the benefit of the parents, while you have all of the heavy lifting done by your parents, you're 16 years old, no one expects you to pay rent, well, a dysfunctional parent might, but good parents don't. And fall out, make your mistakes, you know, it's been two, three years starting businesses under their protective wing because you are a kid and a good parent does support their kids. And I'm going to tell you something else too, and I'm going to mention someone by name. Vehicle virgins, look it up when you get a chance. Uh, this guy, he had people thinking that at a very young age he bought a BMW M5, right? Well, he got into a beef with another guy, and the guy put out that he did not buy that car. His parents co-signed for him to get that car. A lot of these kids on YouTube, and some of them are honest about it, or a lot of them are, are kids of the well-off, and their parents have hooked them up. Their parents bought them that Maserati. Their parents bought them that Lambo. They didn't earn it like you would have to earn it. And I think that misrepresentation 
is, you know, because I know why they do it, because it's like, well, hey, you know, this kid bought the M5. Man, that's hot. He did it, so I can do it. Except you don't have rich parents, and they kind of casually leave out these important details <laughs> as they get you all gassed up, get your head all up in the tizzy like, yeah, I can do that. And um, like someone who just got a white Lambo. He didn't get the white Lambo before his course came out. He got his Lambo after his course came out. Many months after his course came out. And I'm just sitting there like, but people don't want the truth. They want to believe in the dream. They need the dream. They need to fill it. And that ain't, that's not going to get you a real business. That's not going to make you any real money. You can probably get into something quick and I, with this said, there are some people who are killing it on Amazon FBA, and I'm going to tell you that more than likely, they're very well capitalized, and they spent a lot of time researching products. They weren't watching YouTube videos. They were looking up stuff every day. They were out there digging in those results, looking in those categories. That's just it. All right, so now that's what I would do if I was looking for a product because you could sell anything to anyone depending upon where you fit off into the food chain and what special resources that you have because one of the reasons that I've been able to sell so many things online is I had experience selling that stuff out here. If you can sell it out here, you can sell it online. If you can sell it out here very well, you can kill with it online. You can kill with it. But that's another video. That's a whole nother topic. All right, so uh, I'm going to put some kind of special. It'll be the first comment. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to comment. And if you have any experience selling products in real life, and then moving to an online platform, go ahead and share that in the comments. Let the community know. And why are you moving so slow? Oh, you're old. You're very old. You sh should you be driving? All right. See you guys in the next video.